A few weeks ago, I launched this new initiative with you guys where you can hop onto a one-to-one -one call with me and you can get another perspective on your current financial situations. You want to talk about emergency funds, savings account, credit cards, or how to kickstart your own investment journey. We'll cover in that one-to-one -one call. So if you're interested and you want to hop onto a one-to-one -one call with me, the link will be down in the description box below. We are back with part 2 on this anonymous money diary series. Today's video is going to be very insightful. I promise you there is something that you can take away and learn from. So let's get straight into today's video. Let's go. This guy is 30 years old and his job is a product designer as of today. Income after CPF is at $5,200. His savings account is kept with OCBC 360. Financial goals that he has is upcoming wedding in the near 5 years, a house that is coming up and a renovation to that house as well. Investments he has already started and he knows what to do. The credit cards that he currently hold is the City Premier Mouse, the HSBC Revolution credit card and also the POSB Passion card. Let's take a look at his career program progression and this is where you can learn lesson number one. In 2019, he actually didn't start out in the product designer space. He was in the finance space and he drew a salary of $2,800. In the same year, he got promoted and he increased his salary by $500, making it $3,300. And in 2020, he jumped to a sales job and decreased his salary back to $2,800. In 2021, he decided to pick up UI UX on his own and built his entire portfolio from scratch. The same year, he landed an intern Cheap for four months, getting a pay of $1,200. Thereafter, in the same year, he converted to become a full-time staff and drew a salary of $2,600. In the same year, again, he got promoted and he went to a salary of $3,000. And in 2022, an opportunity came for him to jump to a different company and he almost doubled his pay to $5,900. And in the same year, due to different circumstances, he had to change to a different company and which is right now where he's currently at. As a product designer, he's drawing a salary salary of $6,500. All this amount right over here is before CPF. $6,500 is a huge jump if you were to compare it in 2019. He was only drawing a salary of $2,800. Lesson number one that we can learn over here is that it is never too late to embark on something new. He totally changed what he was doing from being a finance person to jumping over to learning UI UX on his own and becoming a product designer. On his own, he picked up the skill, learned it and built his entire portfolio to be able to be at where he is at today. And this is one of the things that we can all learn no matter what stage of life you're at, be it whether you're 30 years old, 35 years old, 40 years old, or even today at 27 years old, it is never too late to do anything. Regardless of how many years it would take you, at the end of the day, you're still going to age. There's this saying and this mindset that I've learned is that an individual who wants to take on an additional university degree at 30 years old feels that it is too late. But regardless of it, time passes and three years later, you're still going to be 33. If you would have taken on that university degree at 33, you would have gained another qualification had you take on that university degree. This is what I keep close to my heart is that whatever that I want to pick up along the way, I will always understand that regardless of whether I do it or not, I'm still going to age. So it is never too late to embark on something new. Try new things every single day and who knows, you might end up finding something that you're really passionate about and that is where I'm at right now. Had I not started this YouTube channel in 2021, not finding out that I'm super passionate to share about personal finance, engaging with all of you guys through the one-to-one -one calls that I have with you, finding more like-minded individuals to talk to, I would not be where I am today. So this lesson is really something that I keep close to my heart. If you identify with whatever that we have covered in the first part in lesson number one, leave them down in the comment section below. I would love to encourage you guys in this journey. If you want to DM me on Instagram, feel free to do so as well. Now let's move on to his expenses and see with an increase in income how his expenses is like. With his take-home salary of $5,200, this is how he allocates his expenses. $1,050 is going to fixed expenses like tithing, giving to his parents, telco, insurance, TV, and also gym membership. This makes up to 20.2% of his entire take-home salary. Moving on to his variable expenses, it is at $680, and that makes up to 13.1% of his salary. And that would mean that the rest of the 66.7% is either 
saved up or allocated into his investments. And this is where we can learn lesson number two. With his increase in salary income over the years, he has never inflated his expenses along with it. The most common financial mistakes that a lot of people make is that when they increase their take-home pay or they receive a huge lump sum in bonus payments, they usually inflate their expenses along with it. And that is where we want to be very careful. And if you find yourself in that situation, never inflate your expenses along with your increase in income and also any bonus payments that come in. Use that money wisely. Once in a while, a treat to yourself can be something good. I'm not saying save up 100% and practice frugal living all the way until you're like 50 or 60 years old, then enjoy. I do not encourage that and this is what I talk about on my channel. As an individual, I save as much as I can but there are certain things that I would spend on. Take for example the mini retirement that I went on. For those of you who are new to the channel, you can refer to the video up above and down below. I shared about my journey taking a 6 months mini retirement, how much it has cost, what are the gains and the sacrifices. So I'm not a person that would advocate 100% frugal living, save, 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 eat vegetable rice, don't live that kind of life because it's very miserable. Practice a balance between enjoying and also saving up for your future and retirement planning. So this is where we can learn lesson number two from this individual. Never inflate your expenses along with your increase of income. One other question that he had asked me was that whether with his investment, should he stop investing because he has certain obligations coming up in the next five years? I would say do both save and also invest. So work out a sum that you need to save up for in the next five years to pay for your obligations like a wedding coming up, house renovation, etc. Have that money saved up in a high interest savings account or things like the Singapore Savings Bond, T-bills that gives you 3.8% or even the money market fund that is available on Weibo, Mumu and also Tiger. These money market funds are actually invested into bonds that mature in equal or less than 4 weeks. It's highly flexible of which you can redeem at any point. Daily, they give you interest. Bonds are relatively safer as compared to putting it into the stock market. So let's say if you use that amount that you need in 5 years and you put it into a stock of which in the next 5 years you don't know whether the price will go up or go down. Good quality stocks are meant to be held in the next 10, 20 years down the road and you don't want to be put into a situation where you need the money in the next 5 years and the market is actually currently at a low and you have to sell just because you need that amount of money. You never want to put yourself in those situations. Keep it in high interest savings account, SSB, T-bills, money market fund like Mumu's SGD Fullerton Cash Fund is what I use. The Mumu Cash Plus will let you keep your amount with them, earn an average return of about 3.85% high flexibility anytime you need the money you can withdraw and daily you are earning interest. Weibo also has this money market fund but I've chosen to go with Mumu because of their platform how easy it is to use and I'm also using them to invest because they are one of the low cost brokerages here in Singapore. The only two platforms that I'm using is Scythetrade and Mumu because they have very low fees for you to trade Singapore stocks and also US stocks. Sign up rewards they're giving you SGD $20 as long as you fund the account with $100 and if you put the $100 into the SGD Fullerton cash fund, you will get an additional $10. So that makes it $30 back with your $100 that you've placed into their account. And if you want to reach the next tier of sign up rewards, you can top up cumulatively up to $2,000 and you will receive a Coca-Cola share worth $80 SGD, roughly about there, depending on the market price. And if you have more money to spare and you want to put it into the money market fund that will give you an interest of about 3.85% last I checked, you will get a coupon of $108 if you top up cumulatively and reach the amount of $10,000. In addition to the sign up rewards that I've mentioned earlier, with the $2,000 or the $10,000, you can use that to subscribe to Momo's Money Market Fund, the SGD Fullerton Cash Fund or the USD Money Market Fund and you'll be receiving $30 cash back for the $2,000 that you have funded and if you have funded $10,000, you're receiving $120 in cash. This is all on top of the new sign up reward. So in total, there sign up rewards for June if you've made use of everything, you'll be getting a total of $368. So if you want to sign up with Mumu, you can use the link down in the description box below. The main point of this is to say never use the amount that you need to save up for in the next five years and invest into the stock market but you can go into things like the Singapore Savings Bond, T-bills, high interest savings account and also money market fund like the SGD Fullerton Cash Fund available on Mumu. This video was one that was very close to my heart and I want to portray in the best possible way so that you can learn 
learn from him and also go on this journey of learning that it is never too late to start on something new and also never inflate your expenses along with an increment or a bonus that comes in. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with somebody you know that will benefit from watching this video and if you want me to do the same for whatever situation you're at in terms of your own finances, link will be down in the description box below. Fill up that Google form and I'll reach out to you. That is all I have for today's video and I'll see you in next week's video. Have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.